Okay, so that was syntax, and now comes semantics. This is lecture number six, and uh, semantics here is the is the big region in the middle that uh, touches the local variables, all the equivalence table, and uh, and gets uh, next token here and there from syntax routines. Um, and then uh, uh, I divided part of it here into the part of uh, Tech 82 that's doing math. Uh, well, this is all really semantics, and the math was just one big chunk of it. I'm not going to talk uh, any more about math in this hour, except saying it's more of the same as what we're going to be doing. So the things that we're going to be talking about now is part of this is part of uh, Tech semantics, and and uh, uh, with math, it's just uh, um, similar. And, and uh, there you can find it in the code where there's special data structures for math. Um, so the, in the dynamic memory, we not only have H list node, V list node, and so on, but we have different kinds of things called no adds, N O A D, that uh, are used for the things that can occur there, like fractions and uh, square roots, overline, um, binary relations, and so on. So new data structures for math. Um, New and special part of the semantic routines that set up those data structures, print them out, and and uh, change them into the kind of data structures that the rest of tech knows about. Um, the big big routine in math is called M list to H list. This converts an M list, a math type list, into an H list, a horizontal type list, and then the rest of tech knows what to do with H list. So those are those are somehow sort of self-contained into a world in themselves. So I called it math on here, and it represents about 40% of the code for semantics in tech. Uh, we'll talk about the other 60% in this hour, so that you get, and then uh, those of you who want to look at the others uh, should be able to follow that in the same in the same way. To start out uh, the semantics, I suppose we ought to talk about the uh, uh, the big switch of tech. This is the or the so-called chief executive, the program that takes over when tech is is running. Um, mentioned that tech consists of lots of procedures, and then there's a little driver program at the end that starts the procedures going. Well, the thing that that it starts going is called main control. And this is uh, where where are we here? Um, Chief Executive Section 906 on page 318. This is the hub of the web. This is where everything uh, comes together. When I was writing Main Control, I had uh, to get a new desk to work on, uh, with the whole tech program spread out all over the desk because I had to be picking up. You know, uh, remembering what all the subroutines do, um, and uh, all the naming conventions that I had used there, because I and I had my finger in several places always at once, uh, uh, because this is referring to the rest of the program and drive and picks up the other things, uh, starts them going at once. Um, uh, this uh, 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 part of the program also has been um, um, made a little bit more complicated to read because it's inner loop stuff when you when you're going through a paragraph and uh, trying to to uh, set text this is the uh, the, the, the high uh, priority for for the money of the thing so um, uh, the main control procedure consists of um, uh, uh, has been tuned in order to to uh, uh, go fast on on the on the text so main control Looks something like this. The big switch um, is um, uh, says get NC token, and then reswitch is uh, another label where we could come back to in case we didn't like the token we got and we want to try again without getting another one, or we want to use it again in some other slight disguise. And here there's a b bunch of little code for uh, pause for interrupt. You can interrupt at this point, and uh, you can also um, uh, it'll, tracing commands will print out the command that it got here. So when we were running yesterday and it said, here's where I got a blank space, here's where the letter B came through, that was at this point research. But uh, uh, except for this diagnostic information, then it's a big case, and it's case abs of mode plus 
concur command of. And then we have a bunch of things that will be like V mode plus um, uh, plus skip. And this would be for uh, plus V skip, say, for a V skip that occurs in vertical mode. Um, and uh, H mode plus H skip might be another another case. Um, uh, so here's a case, another type where I, where I split into many, many cases by uh, adding together uh, the current command to, to, to something. V mode has been set up and H mode, they've been set up to be spaced apart so that these will, uh, these will all give us a unique, unique division into cases. Okay. Now, the, now uh, the, I suppose there's also an M mode plus H skip because H skip is allowed in that mode. And then in most of these cases, there will be a um, uh, there will just be a procedure call here like uh, I don't know what it be, but do glue or something. It won't be called that, but but it will be a there will be a procedure call here and it's called an action procedure. And then in your in your uh, listing, there will be another module, say it'll there will be called declare action procedures um, needed in main module in, in main control. And and uh, another one of the action procedures will be procedure do glue, and then it'll do it'll actually do the it'll actually do the uh, uh, the thing that uh, that you want it to do um, uh, for these three cases. Uh, the reason I separated this out is because a lot of people have to use Pascal compilers that um, put restrictions on how big. A, a procedure can be, um, uh, and uh, and so main control procedure. If I had all of these, if I had all these semantics inside the main control procedure, it would way exceed these uh, this limit. Uh, especially on IBM machine, which wants everything to fit uh, into a small area that they can use only two base registers for. So, so the the um, um, so main control consists mostly of this case statement and calls on on a procedure. Uh, the only exception is those cases that are really in the uh, mainstream for the for the inner loop, something like, for example, H mode plus letter, H mode plus letter, H mode plus other char. Uh, this is what you find in the middle of in the middle of text, and this is handled right um, in the main control procedure itself. Uh, and the, and the, with the things that will look for ligatures and do those things. Um, uh, there are a few other things like spaces between words, which were considered important enough to put most of the most of their code, the, the common code for space between words also in main control procedure. Now, the uh, um, the cur command is one of these command codes that section 201 lists all those command codes section 201 and the next ones and we can take a look at those codes um, uh, to re we, we looked yesterday at the first at page uh, in 201 we looked at the first 16 codes but on page 202 it shows the next codes and it, and this extends way off so uh, we got um, uh, code like charnum that's for the backslash char math charnum mark input x-ray is uh, the internal code name for uh, show instructions and make box h move all of these all of these um, are command codes for different things tech has to do all the way goes to the next page now on the next page uh, by the way can we have the house lights on a little more so that people can read um, people yeah is that better okay can you see it in, enough in the first row because <laughs> you get some of the light from this guy okay Thanks. Uh, now the, um, uh, the 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 codes above uh, max non prefix command, uh, uh, which is a uh, which changes from day to day as tech gets larger or smaller, uh, but it's now equal to 69. Uh, these codes up 70 and high and up to 91 here are all um, are all things that somebody might want to say is global. Or, uh, or uh, and so on, maybe outer or deaf or something. But you have these commands that uh, will take a prefix, and they're independent of the mode. If you really had to cut down main control further, um, and 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 uh, you had too many cases.
to handle, you could rewrite it so that reswitch would check if Kirk command is bigger than max non prefix command, then uh, then do a prefix command. Uh, else, do do a case statement like this. Then you could re then you could cut down the definition of H mode. H mode is now I think 91. You could cut it down to 70. Uh, so that you would, uh, so that these branches, because because all the all these codes 70 up to 91 are really uh, done. This, you do the same thing for them, independent of the mode, and and all of them really just call the one procedure called prefix command. So um, uh, I, I didn't do that now because why should I add something to the inner loop if I some code to make an if test in the inner loop if I, it's not necessary? But you could cut down the size of main control by three times 20. Uh, cases in that case statement, uh, since they all go to the same place and they're all consecutive, uh, or three consecutive regions uh, of the uh, of the cases do that. Um, now the codes above max command are the ones that get NC token will will uh, wipe out. Uh, undefined control sequence uh, will not get through. Nor will marks, top mark, bottom mark, uh, call, long call, outer call, long outer call. Uh, these last won't even occur through the scanner. These appear in the EQ, te EQ table, but they're only used to tell for, for purposes of, uh, of uh, when we are updating the data structure to tell whether we need to update reference counts or not. Um, so, so these last things don't have to do with, with uh, coming through get next at all, but these six here are, are taken care of by get NC token. So that's what the Kirk command will be, one of these codes. Now, suppose you wanted to, you, uh, wanted to figure out how tech does a certain, a certain thing. Like, let's try to figure out, uh, uh, suppose you didn't happen to know that X-ray was the internal code of show box, but you wanted to see, well, how, do, how the heck does tech do a show box, okay? Well, the answer is, we look in the index under show box primitive. And for every primitive of tech, there are 242 or three of these. Uh, they're listed in the same kind of a fashion, like show box primitive here is on page 430. Um, and it's alphabetized under SH, not under backslash. There are three or four primitives that are only one character long, and those are indexed under single character primitives right here on the same page, fortunately, as show box. Uh, there are four of them. And, uh, but otherwise, the Primitives have, are, are made out of letters, and there. And uh, um, so, so anyway, that'll refer you to where um, where the primitive was actually loaded into the hash table. Every primitive is put into the text uh, hash table by the Initech program, and this particular one was done in module 1159. So, if we turn to 1159, we will see. Um, of course, now we're. We're, we're paging around in this code without looking at the environment too much, but uh, um, here we'll see a call on primitive procedure, show box. Now, the, this, pre, this procedure primitive is what's used to enter all the primitives, so I call it 242 times. Um, and there's a module 218 that says put each of text primitives into the hash table. And this is one of the, one of the thing, things that belongs with that module because of the plus here. Uh, and uh, so all these, and, and uh, uh, that module 218 would refer you to all the calls on primitive if you really wanted a list of all the primitives. Now, uh, show box then is put in with, and, and then here's the command and the chur, the, the, the modifier to the command. So the command code for show box is x ray, and the character or modifier the, is show box code, so that if uh, somebody writes show box, what comes through text scanner is Kerr command will be X-ray and Kircher will be show box code, which we've defined here to be one. Okay. Uh, right after putting something in primitive, I also have a, have a case of the print command and char uh, procedure. There's a procedure that we have to use when we're tracing commands that's going to, that's going to be used in, in, in reswitch here. Uh, to print the thing out in symbolic form. It's not going to say you're doing command number 12, uh, Kerchar is one. It's going to want to say show box. And so, um, in, so X-ray, uh, in, inside of that procedure is going to just, uh, is going to look at the, uh, the chur code and it's going, and it's going to find show box code there so it'll print show box with an escape character in front of it. And so then, then, uh, you'll, you'll see what, uh, uh what came through. 
in this uh, com print command and share procedure, it's supposed to be robust. It's supposed to be able to handle cases that can't ever really be there. There's no way for a tech user to, to put, to, to get command x-ray associated with any code other than these here. No, a tech user can never uh, enter uh, the, uh, uh, something in the hash table whose command is x-ray. Um, only the primitive procedure is allowed to do this by, by any tech, but, but you guys could do this by, by changing the web listing, doing something, you know, you, could, you can get anything into, uh, into that EQTB, especially if you make a mistake. So, uh, so this print command and share procedure uh, has to never give an error message uh, um, specifically by calling error. It, it actually can be used in, inside of other routines, which we wouldn't want to to, to uh, lead to an error message, but it has to do something in all cases. Well, it's just going to say show in all those other cases. Sometimes if I think there's really a chance that somebody would have would want to know that it was a bad one, I, I would have I would have rewritten this if I felt uh, really uh, it needed it. And I would have show code printing show and the other cases would say unknown X-ray or something like that. But um, uh, I, I want to make sure that, that, that you know, that, this, that the procedure does always have a do something in every case uh, that doesn't that doesn't uh, abort your job. Um, so then show box comes through as X-ray. Well, what about um, uh, uh, now? How does that get, get acted on? Well, it's. Um, we could now find that by looking in the index under X-ray to see whether where X-ray is used, but that would refer us right back to the previous page. So save us to save time. We look here and we say uh, cases of main control that don't depend on mode. Uh, one of them is going to be any mode X-ray, and it's going to call a procedure called show whatever. So show whatever is one of these action procedures I'm talking about, it, and and most of the semantics are done by. Uh, action procedures like that, and here it is in uh, the next page there on uh, module 1161. Uh, uh, declare action procedures for use by main control. One of the things is procedure show whatever, and this is uh, it looks at the kercher, and uh, if it's show box code, then it gets us to module 1164. Show the current contents of a box. Okay, well, turn to page 1164. Uh, show the current contents of a box. Scan an 8 bit integer. Um, that's a special routine that calls scan integer and makes and if it's not between 0 and 255 it gives you an error message saying that it should have been between 0 and 255 and that it's changing it to 0 on you. Uh, then we print a new line and uh, this uh, greater than sign in box and we print integer curveval scan 8 bit integer reduce pr puts its answer in curveval. Um, it's one of the reasons I wanted to use a global for this, because almost because all the time I'm scanning something and I don't want to have to have a new local every time for the dumb thing, um, and and actually specifically assign it. Um, but I got to be careful, of course, that I don't it doesn't get wiped out by something else in the in the meantime, and that's the danger, the well-known dangers of global variables, so that uh, somebody else, if if everybody uses curveval. Like if print new line would use curveval, I'd certainly be in trouble. So uh, you do this only when you know that your use of the thing is going to be near the, the near the time it was actually stored in the global variable. Otherwise, you're in trouble. And, and also, I couldn't do this. I, well, if I if I made main control recursive, uh, so that people would incorporate a whole tech job inside of another one, uh, then I would have to have curveval be local to main control. All right. Now print char. Uh, equal sign. So box whatever is going to be equal to, and then um, we have two cases. But it's just, notice it refers to box of curveval. This is um, a, a macro uh, that, that uh, refers to a position in EQTB, the current value of of that box, um, and it's a pointer to the box. It's either an H list node or a V list node if the box is there. But if it's no, that means that the box there's no box there. And uh, tech calls that absent. Um, otherwise, we use the show box routine that displays all these boxes out in various lines using the uh, um, the show box depth and show box breadth parameters to, to cut off uh, and explain how much is actually being shown. Then we give an error. Then we give an error message. Okay, that's not really an error. And the help message that goes with that was described on the previous page. There, it says 
We saw it yesterday. This isn't an error message. I'm just showing something. Well, that's the whole thing. That's a semantics for show box. Um, and it's typical of a simple case of semantics. And there are uh, 91 times 3 branches to this uh, thing, so about 273 cases um, uh, you switch into from this reswitch procedure. And one by one, you check those off and uh, make sure that, that that tech is doing the right thing on them. Okay. Uh, now, you want to add something to tech. Um, the extensions uh, usually come through a, um, uh, a single place. Let me see if I can find the for extensions to tech. We'll talk about that in a second. Module two, 1209, right near the end, is where extensions are discussed. And, um, and uh, it's worth uh, reading that just to get a feeling for what you have to do. You know, suppose you added a new feature to tech, how many different parts of tech would actually uh, be changed uh, to, to accommodate that feature? Well, you've got to put a new primitive in the uh, hash table. You've got to um, uh, maybe uh, put a new kind of what's it node uh, type into your data structure. Um, I see Lyle sitting here in, near the front row. He's uh, put in the feature at Xerox that prints in color. Uh, so he knows uh, what you know what, what goes on in these things. But there's uh, various places where you have to, where where tech would actually uh, get extended. And we and I uh, try to make most of those all uh, be possible to put them into this one place extensions, and uh, provide hooks into the main program that uh, uh, so that it, you don't have to um, affect the rest of it. Uh, I got a beep. From something. Warning, five minutes to automatic log out. Let me see. Okay. Yeah. I don't know if I'll use the computer, but I wanted to make, be logged in just in case. <laughs> Excuse me. So, um, so these hooks are shown um, in, the, in, the, in the sections there following 1209. And um, most of the case, though, we won't have to, uh, we won't have to add a new command code if we're lucky. We won't have to add anything to main control because of what's there, uh, because there's one of the command codes is called extension and it just has a, a, a chur part that says what kind of extension you have so if possible when you make an extension to tech use extension as your command code and just give another chur field and then the action procedure that you get is um, let me see right there 1216 module 1216 is um, any mode extension, do extension, and cause the action procedure in 1217, do extension, uh, which just for, is a case statement that implements the different extensions and gives confusion if it's an extension it doesn't know about. Confusion is, um, the, uh, is an interesting error message. Uh, it, it, it's a, uh, it, this is where it types out, this can't happen. Um, but actually, it doesn't type out, this t can't happen all the time. It, it's remembered whether there's been an error, at least one error before. If this is the first error that tech has seen, then it says this can't happen. But if something, but if the user has really has screwed up before, it says uh, 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 something else. Uh, let's take a look at confusion just to see what, so you get the idea what that is. Because confusion is used to, for internal consistency checks in tech. Um, confusion is defined in... You guys are fast. What? 90? Okay. Module number 90, page 32. Uh, confusion. And so there's a Boolean, global Boolean variable called spotless. And that is uh, set ordinarily to true until you've got your first error. So if it's spotless, it says this can't happen. Then it gives the indication of what can't happen. Uh, it would say X1 in that case. And, um, and then it gives a help message uh, uh, there. Uh, then uh, that help message, by the way, will show up on your on on um, uh, on your file. Uh, let's see. Wait a minute. Because the succumb procedure, the the, the succumb procedure is is uh, guaranteed to, uh, to to cause a fatal error. This is where it dies. Uh, but on the other case, it says I can't go on meeting you like this, and then it. Uh, uh, and then so you stop uh, by the, 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 the different help message, okay? So, so that's what confusion prints on. Okay. Now back to extensions. 
I'm glad that some of you are chuckling. You know, I worked on this a little bit. Too. Okay. Now, so the so the extensions um, uh, occur in uh, the the hooks are are indicated. Uh, let's see, in um, uh, on, like on page on uh, module 1225, page 400. Um, you'll see the uh, uh, that I've made a what's it node have four subtypes for the, the four things that I'm treating as extensions in tech. Uh, I'm considering op open, send, close, and xsend as if they were extensions uh, to provide a example paradigms of what, what you do for extensions. Um, and so 1225 says in, in the case subtype uh, it gives four cases. Otherwise, it, it, now this is for displaying a what's it node, so we always we don't want to give an error message. And so if we don't know what what it is, we just print out what's it, and uh, don't don't say confusion in that case. Um, but if we're copying a node, if we're copying a what's it node, that's one of the things we have to do. So module 1226 is um, a, is a uh, something that uh, is, you know belongs in section 200. Um, and and uh, all of these uh, hooks from the rest of the program have been uh, filled in here in the extension section, and you could get you have you certainly have to provide confusion message there if you're trying to copy a what's it node you don't know how many words to copy so you're in trouble the what's it nodes are are, are not of a given uh, known size open node size is bigger than a send node size in this particular example, and the closed node size is is. Uh, uh, two words would turns out to be equal to the send node size, but it's a coincidence. Um, there's a place where you have to return uh, recycling nodes to the data structure. That's uh, used in section 196. So 1227 is the code for wipe out a what's it node and go to done. And so that so you have to if you extend uh, tech in, in introducing a new kind of what's it, then uh, you must uh, also uh, be able to create, print out, and and uh, free those nodes, and that's what these last three sections were about. Then there's a bunch of, of simple things that d didn't affect uh, tech at all in the case of send, open, and close, but they might otherwise, so we still have the hooks. So, so 1228, 1229, 1230, 1231, all of these... Um, um, Let's see. I think it would be good for the videotape people to show this, to show my finger pointing, even though the people in the audience can't see my finger too well. So, um, uh, on the uh, in these cases, the, the modules are trivial. Um, like it says, incorporate a what's it note into an H box, and the um, uh, the code for that is do nothing. Do nothing. If you that's a macro in web that expands into nothing. That's an empty statement. Um, let D be the width of the what's it node P. D is set to zero. That's uh, so. All of these are trivial things, but you have to. Um, uh, if you add a what's it where you want to do something, then you'd have to check on the what's it nodes type and see that you were doing the right thing. Okay. So uh, this gives an idea as to what parts of tech uh, would be affected if you add something new to the language. Whenever you add something new to tech, you realize that you're making it impossible for your programs to run at somebody else's installation. And uh, you have to, and I, I would strongly recommend that everybody keep a, a uh, vanilla version of tech around for those people who want to write programs for other users. Uh, uh, Does not let it gr grow to the point where, where uh, we can't share uh, where we can't share anymore. Uh, a lot of effort has been put into this program to make it possible to, to, to be used in, um, in uh, 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 thousands of computer centers around the world. Uh, and we can, we can do that if we keep our, our extensions uh, in uh, control so that, we, we, that you'll also be able to have a change file that doesn't include all of your extensions. Somebody says, I want to write something that I know is going to work at somebody else's machine, then uh, you should ha you should have one there. You should have you should have a version of tech that that, that uh, does that for him. Okay, now um, I'd like to follow one more thing through the semantics uh, to finish our, so that we can get an idea of the rest of the semantics. And so let's try. Um, well, unless anybody has a better s example, I I, would, I thought I'd try uh, following through the an H box to something and then just make the list uh, uh, rather trivial. 
well, let's 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 make a small H box and see what what it does. So suppose I want to um, say H box to um, um, uh, 100 points of the letter A. <clears throat> okay, that shouldn't be a hard thing, but it'll actually take us through a little adventure through a lot of different parts of tech. Okay, now, um, first place we we have to well let's think about what 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 we imagine would be going on after you have the after you see H box tech has to look ahead and see if it, if you specify something like to 100 point or expand by 100 points or just uh, if it's just H box with nothing after it. Um, uh, there, there are two cases of H box uh, that you can see that uh, one is where you give a, uh, a particular size and then the glue will have to be set so that you reach that size. Somehow we don't have any glue in here. Uh, it's too bad. Maybe I'll put a space after that and uh, that'll and uh, well if there was no glue um, uh, we, have, we, want, we might as well see what happens if there is no glue in the box. Okay. Um, Anyway, one case is that we specify a final size, 100 points exactly. The other case is that we expand by a given amount, where this could be expand 100 points, and that would say take a natural size and make it 100 points or more. Um, the special time when you write just H box and left brace, that's expand by zero point. So you have these kinds of things that can occur. Um, Specific, the specification of what kind of an H box we have. There's two cases: the expanding and the exact, and exactly. Then um, uh, H box can be used in different contexts. It can be preceded by a lot of different things. Um, for example, it could have been preceded by lower, lower two points, and that means you know move it down two if it's in an H list. Uh, it could have been preceded by um, ship out. Uh, which says uh, how it goes. We, it could have been preceded by leaders, which says this box is going to represent uh, uh, the replicating part in leaders, and going to be that's going to be followed by glue. So there's there's various contexts by which uh, this in which this H box could have appeared, and we want to uh, we have to somehow remember then as we're as we're building up the H box, we're going to have to remember what we're going to do with it after we're finished with the box. Um, so where does tech remember that? Well, um, uh, the answer is on the save stack, we also remember stuff like that. Now, yesterday, I told you that the save stack was used for saving and restoring equivalents um, and that it had this kind of a, we put fix up instructions on the save stack. And then we had boundary words on the save stack too. Well, just um, just uh, after those boundary words or before the boundary words, whatever you you, you want to call it, uh, there's room for there's, it's a nice place to put stuff before you get to the new to the fix-ups afterwards. Because if you're going to come back to this boundary word, it's going to be at a time when you know uh, what kind of a boundary word it was. So uh, the boundary word includes a code that tells you what kind of a uh, group you're in. And in this case, we'll be in an HBox group. When we finish an HBox group, we'll be ready to read some stuff off of the top of this, off of the, off of the save stack that will tell us that this HBox was being lowered, perhaps, by something, um, or maybe it was being put into leaders. Maybe it was there was a set box uh, 100 equals this uh, in front of it. Um, all that information will be encoded uh, on the save stack at the end at the end. And so the safe stack contains below its boundary words contains mysterious other information uh, and then and then fix ups um, occurring. <clears throat> now, there's a there's a, a factoring problem involved here. Somehow I, I mentioned there are different things that can come in front of it, like lower leaders. I didn't mention um, set box, but that's another one. Uh, it's called save in the present tech, but set box in tech 82. Um, and uh, you might have said global set box, which uh, which is a, a different from just from a local set box. And uh, a few other things can precede 
um, can precede this. And then all of these operations can take any box. So these operations could also could, could apply to an H box, to a V box, to a V top, and a few other you know, V split. There are a few other cases that uh, that make into a box. And so all so you have um, uh, you know, two things that are that uh, multiply together all the possibilities for how to use a box and all the possibilities for how to make a box. And uh, so we so tech wants to represent uh, uh, all these combinations. So. So um, first, so these these uses of a box put something on the save stack corresponding to the use of the box, and then uh, and then they they uh, and then all the different ways to make a box put something on the save stack uh, saying what kind of box they're making, and everything is finally gloriously put together at the end. Um, now let's take a look at the that's the, uh, the general problem that had to be solved uh, when we look at the specific case. We want to keep a little aware of, of, of the environment of that case. Let's see if I can find out where HBox uh, uh, is uh, done. Now, let's see. Building boxes and lists is this part uh, 46 that starts on page 326 in module 932. Um, and uh, uh, but it starts getting into boxes. Uh, let's see. Um, on like module 939 tells how it's going to represent the context of the box. And the context of the box, it, in the simple case that we just have an H box in the middle of some other list with nothing else in front of it, the context is going to be like lower by zero because we're just going to, it's going to be treated as a special case of lowering or raising or moving left to right where the amount of shifting is zero. So the context code for that is going to turn out to be zero, but there will be a context code placed um, on the uh, save stack. So when we when we scan HBox, um, it, it's going to come through. The command code for that is make box. And all of these different contexts are going to insist that make box command is the next one. Otherwise, uh, there will be an error message saying uh, uh, I expected a box specification here or something like that. Um, and the, uh, um, uh, the the any mode make box comes through on module 951, and so so module 951, the last two lines of that any mode make box save zero is set to zero begin box. Now saved zero um, is an abbreviation for save stack. Of, um, of save pointer plus zero and saved one and same thing for sticking in a one here. So this means it goes at the top of the save stack. Save pointer minus one is where the the information that, uh, that that's really at the top of the stack goes and uh, zero. This this is the, the the first place that's available on that stack. Um, if any of you looked at the code for save stack, it's made sure that there's always always five or six uh, places available before it checks again to see whether it's run out of save stack space. The, the test we don't have to test here whether or not there's room on the save stack. That test has already been made that there's always room for five or six things. Because um, whenever it does test, it's at a point that it's, it's guaranteed never to put five or six things on before the next test. That we don't want to be testing all over the place. OK, so now save zero. In other words, this position on save stack is set to zero, indicating a, 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 equivalent to a shift amount by zero. Because if I had a, oh, OK, so some of the other possibilities for getting the context code are, are described in other models. I don't want to go into that. Oh, so, um, so we got zero in that position. Then we call begin box, the begin box subroutine. And uh, unfortunately, I was not able to uh, write the begin box subroutine next because it calls n box, so, uh, box n subroutine. Um, and I had to declare box n first. I had to, uh, the reason is that uh, when I begin a box, I don't know. I, um, all I've seen so far is a make box. I don't know that I'm making an h box. This might be some simple thing like instead of h box, I might have just said box 20. In which case I would I would be able to finish the box right away. 
something like HBox, I'm going to have to wait and scan this whole thing, in, uh, which might be arbitrarily long before I finish the box. But I might finish it very simply. So I call begin box now. Begin box is module 958. And uh, that's what then is going to look at and see what kind of make box we're supposed to make. And in this case, we have um, other cases. Initiate the construction of an H box or V box. Because let me see, where did I, where's my call on primitive for H box? It must be around here somewhere. The H box primitive. Is uh, yeah, bottom of page 330. H box primitive for H box is right here, and it um, and, and it was it's the command code is make box. It's uh, char code is V top code plus uh, H mode. So so uh, that's where we are here. Um, uh, H box gets a V top code plus H mode, and that's so the H mode is going to tell us what mode to go in when we when we are uh, when we reach this uh, point. V box would look very similar, but it would have V mode in there instead. So. So as far as tech knows, it's it's uh, it's got the command code of make box, and then its chur code is is going to be V top code plus either V mode or H mode or or zero, and these are the three cases that we're coming into in uh, module now. This is uh, 962. So module 962 here is where we, oops, on 962 here's where we we uh, make. Uh, enter restricted horizontal mode or internal vertical mode in order to make a box. And so the first thing is we stuff away Kirchar uh, minus VTOP code into a local variable K. The, um, uh, the value of K will be zero for VTOP, otherwise it'll be V mode for VBox or H mode for HBox. We increase the save pointer. That means then that we have now officially put this guy on the save stack. The, um, it's in order to make room for the next thing. We call scan spec subroutine. The scan spec subroutine is what scans this part of the input. Expand or two, followed by 100 points. And it puts two things on the save stack. Uh, one of them is either 0 or 1, uh, telling whether it's 2 or expand. And the other one is the dimension, 100 point. Um, I guess. There's no point in going to look at the scan spec subroutine, but it just calls scan keyword, and then it puts those two things on the stack. Um, and uh, I believe it also increases the save pointer by two, so that uh, we now have put three things onto the stack, telling us the context of this box as well as the uh, final dimensions of the box. Now, now we. Uh, uh, still have K, which tells us what uh, was going on, although Kircher has changed many times because the scan spec procedure is called get next, of course. K equals H mode, then we call new save level H box group. So the save pointer, not, the save stack is now going to get a boundary word for an H box group. Um, and uh, then we're ready to know when the right brace comes along that we're in an HBox group, and so the thing to do is to, uh, uh, to, 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 to uh, package up our HBox. That's, we, we'll see that in a minute. But we put on the save stack then a boundary word that, um, that refers us to an HBox group, and our current group, uh, the current type of thing we're in, is going to be HBox. Otherwise, for v VBox and VTOP, is similar. Things go, then we say push nest. And here's something I, should, I, I uh, want to know about. In tech, uh, uh, it has uh, it has a stack for all the semantic activities for the, for various um, kinds of lists, and uh, the, and this has state information analogous to the input state. Remember when we were talking about syntax last hour, the syntax would have a state and loc and limit, and there were a few other things we didn't uh, we didn't get into, but like the name of the file you're reading is part of your state. Um, the uh, semantics also have these have a st have a stack of of these things, and uh, one of the things is the mode that you're in. That's that's a current part of your semantic state, and then you have um, um, the head uh, the head and tail of the list that you're building. So if you're in horizontal mode, for example, you're building a horizontal list. Head points to the beginning of that horizontal list. Tail points to the end of that horizontal list. Um, 
there's a the space factor is another p part of the uh, of your mode uh, of your of your uh, state in, as far as semantics is concerned for building horizontal lists. So um, we would uh, so when we say push nest, this says um, all the state variables that go into semantics, save them away in your nest stack for semantics, and so that they'll pop up again later when we're done with this. But but they all get saved. Um, and so we're pushing some things on the save stack and some things in the nest stack. Well, uh, it turned out to be convenient to do that. Um, and then we set mode to minus k. Now k is either h mode or v mode. So it's in, and uh, the mode, the value of, of your current mode is, is six possibilities. There's vertical mode and the v mode and minus v mode. Uh, minus v mode is internal vertical mode and plus V mode is what you have when, uh, on the outermost level of tech building pages. And there's H mode and minus H mode. Uh, minus H mode is restricted horizontal mode. That's what you have in the middle of an H box. Plus H mode is the, uh, 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 the ordinary horizontal mode, which you have for building a paragraph. Then there's M mode and minus M mode, plus M mode is in a displayed math formula. Minus M mode is in a text math formula. So those are the six modes. And that's part of you. And, and so when you say push nest, it saves away your mode and your head and tail of your current list, your space factor or pre depth or whatever was, was a, a part of the mode there. And also uh, 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 presents you with a fresh new mode, a brand new mode, your new you now got an empty list that you're building. So your head is now pointing to um, a uh, special location in memory that's just going to be the head of this list. It's not really a, an element of a list, but it's a, it's a base of, of the thing. And the tail is pointing to the same place, so that uh, is representing an empty list. Um, and uh, the mode, that when I say push nest, I stay in the same mode I was in. Um, uh, but now I change it to minus K, which is minus H mode or minus V mode. So now I'm going to make either a V box or an H box. And uh, I have to initialize the space factor in the case of uh, horizontal mode. So I, I set space factor to 1,000. 1,000 is the normal space factor, meaning don't, don't make any correction to spacing. Um, if space factor was 2,000, it would say double your, your, stretch, your stretchability in the uh, spacing and half your shrinkability. Um, and that return, that, and then return, which, re, which means go to exit, go, get out of the procedure for begin a box. So now uh, this is a, a, a simple case of post-hypnotic suggestion. Here's where we, we now return to main control and we go back into tech and, and uh, we, we uh, have our fingers crossed that someday, somewhere, a right brace is going to come along and we're going to be able to finish this H box. But we, we uh, fearlessly um, let tech uh, uh, run uh, with its head, uh, do whatever it wants to, you know, uh, to, the, to this H box, and all kinds of things can happen before we ever get back control again. Those things will presumably be, uh, uh, our state will presumably be pushed down on either the save stack or the nesting stack or both. Um, whenever uh, something even more complicated comes along. But someday we're going to get back and a right brace is going to come along and take us out. Well, what does come along? In this case, um, wait a minute, where did I say scan left brace? Oh, the scan spec subroutine actually scanned away the left brace too. Um, why not? Because one of the things it could have been was H box left brace, and why should we have to back up? It for? So it takes away the left brace too. <clears throat> Scan spec subroutine is only used in two places here and after H align. Uh, v center, I guess, another case. Okay, now, now, so so we've pu we've cre we've pushed uh, our previous mode into the nest, and um, uh, we're in a fresh mode with an empty list. Next thing comes through the scanner is H mode plus uh, a letter. Letter A. Um, okay, do we see? Do we have time? Well, I guess we we have time to do a little bit of this. Um, well, I won't go through all the details. We certainly will have to check now for the th character following A to see if it's part of a ligature and uh, whether kerning is needed and things like that. Well, I'm not going to go through all that code. But uh, H mode plus letter 
is uh, the case recognized in module 907, and it tells us to go to main loop. And um, main loop is um, in um, where? Main loop is in that same module, 907. And it says append, OK, here we go. Main loop is append character curture and the following characters, if any, to the current H list in the current font. Go to reswitch when a non character has been fetched. 910. So 910 is all that action. And uh, this is this is inner loop, so we're trying to be fast here. F is set to curve font. This is the internal code of the current font. If it's undefined font, then we then we're not in a loop anymore, and we give an, uh, uh, we, we call a procedure for missing font and go back to big switch, do nothing. But uh, let's suppose f is not an undef not not undefined font. Then we set c to the uh, current ch character, which is uh, ask the internal code for lowercase a, 97. And we got main loop one, which uh, is a label that's been explained on the previous page. It said. Um, Main loop one is like uh, is like main loop, but F and C are the current font and character. So that's uh, I guess a correct description of what main loop one is. Now here we have to check to see whether this is a valid character in the font or not. So he says, is, is it less than font beginning character or greater than the font ending character? Because C because this font might uh, it might be valid, okay, but it might not have this character in it. And uh, if so, then uh, we have to then we have a, a char warning procedure, which um, uh, which gets called and we again ignore the character. Tech will never put in its data structure a character that doesn't exist in the font. The output routine never has to check whether a character is there or not. That's already been done before we ever put it in the data structure. Um, but so we get through this test. And main loop two, if I bet you if I turned back the page and and uh, and gave the camera operator more fits, uh, uh, it would just say that it was like main loop one, except that the character also is in the right range for the font. Um, so then we set a couple other variables that are going to help us on our ligature space loop. And um, but the gist of it all is that we're going to finally get to main loop three, which is going to finally uh, um, uh, put in put a put a character into the current list in font F. What that means is the following. I've got now when I when I said push nest a minute ago, um, uh, that meant that I uh, that I had a, a pointer variable called head, which uh, gets pushed down at, at each level, uh, pointing to some new word of memory, which is null. Uh, it has a null pointer in it and nothing nothing there. This represents an empty list. And tail is also pointing to this same place in memory to represent the empty list. Now, when I get a new character A, what I'm going to do is make up a uh, char node, which is which is one of these nodes that goes in the uh, a one word memory. And tail is going to point to it. So I'll say get a veil. And in fact, I'll I'll use a special case of get a veil that's uh, uh, that doesn't call a subroutine unless um, Unless it's a hard situ unless it's one of the hard cases, in order to, because I'm in the inner loop. And anyway, I get an, an available one-word node, and um, and I'll have a null pointer in here, but I'll make this one point to this one, and tail will point to this one, and it'll say F here and C here. The font and the character will be stored in that node. F is already known to be in the correct range for a quarter word, but this 97 code for ASCII, I'm going to have to add min quarter word to it in order to get it in there. Anyway, I, I'm going to uh, have a font and a character and then a null pointer at the end of that. If this list got any longer, let's suppose I had a space there just to, I won't go through exact, I won't go through the code, but I'll tell you what happened. If I put a space here, what would happen? We'd look at font, at the current font F and say, what's the uh, glue for that current font? And um, in most cases, there will be a pointer to a glue specification for that font. If not, we'll make up such a pointer for, so that later on we can we can do it in one step. Uh, there will be a pointer to a glue specification. So then this will point to um, tail. We move to a new word, which is glue. 
and this is and this would be glue, which refers to the to the glue uh, for the uh, current font. Um, there's a little packet that says how much to stretch, how much to shrink, how much to space for uh, spaces in, in each font. And uh, even the undefined font has one of these, uh, which, is, which are all zero. But there, this glue will point to this word of glue specification. Um, and uh, there's a reference count in this word saying how many people are pointing to it so that this will disappear when uh, there's no there's uh, uh, no more uses of it. But this is a this glue is a very compact thing. Uh, this one has to specify three 32 bit numbers. Uh, so we don't want to we don't want to waste that much space in tech. We, we do it. We get by with that. We just point just pointing to it. Um, and have a reference count in here to, to so that this will go away when, when we don't need it. So uh, this is a one word node for the character, a two word node for the glue. And and uh, we built a, an H list that contained two items in it. When we when we when we made this uh, space, we checked the space factor that the space factor was a hundred a thousand. Uh, therefore, we, we could use the standard glue for the font. Otherwise, we would have diddled with it uh, a little bit. <clears throat> OK, that's uh, uh, what we did then a in a space, then a right brace comes through. And here's where some this is a, uh, an, another big thing. When tech sees a right brace, almost anything can happen depending on what that right brace means. And uh, let's see, where does a right brace come through? Um, I think it's. Um, Oh goodness! Uh, I need some help on this right brace. Anyway, there's a there's um, if I came if I went in in uh, handle right brace is the procedure. So so when a right brace comes through, then then we call handle right brace and uh, um, 964 is the module number. Um, no, nine, 964 is the one that's used in 947. Yeah. Okay. Nine, 947 is the procedure handle right brace. Here we are, and uh, it does. It has to deal with all of all the things that can occur when a right brace occurs. Now, there's a lot of error situations that that we want to detect here. Um, like an suppose somebody said dollar sign and then he had a right brace. Um, before he finished his formula. Um, well, dollar sign is also considered to go on the save stack with a boundary word. And so to the left and right. And uh, there's also now something called group begin, which uh, which will give you local uh, <coughs> local uh, variables just like left braces do. So there are things that so the right brace might match something that isn't a, that isn't a left brace. We have to check for that, decide what to do. We have to decide, for example, in this case, whether or not the guy forgot a dollar sign or whether he uh, put in a right brace that he didn't want to. Um, and uh, so those cases have to be have to be uh, handled. But in this case, we're lucky. Uh, so we got a right brace. And uh, what happens? Uh, it it uh, calls case cur group of cur group for us is an H box group. So it must be in cases of handle right brace where right brace triggers a delayed action 9064. And then it's going to finally take us to mod module um, um, 979. No. Let's see. 964. If I looked in the index under H box group, I would find it. Yeah, well, here it is, 964. Um, okay. <clears throat> so uh, H box group says call package of zero. And um, a V box group says end a paragraph in package of zero. So package of zero must be the thing that uh, is going to wrap this thing up into a little neat little package. And that's on the next page, 965. Um, and package of the parameter is going to tell whether it's a V top or not. It's all is the only other case. Um, unsave. This is what goes through all all the fix ups on the uh, on the save stack. 
So it goes back to the previous boundary word. Anything that's been declared in here, if I had any depths in here, font changes in here, they all get undone by, by the unsafe procedure. Well, then I've got back to the point where there's three words on the save stack that are telling me what kind of box I was supposed to make and what the, what the use of that box was going to be. So I decreased save pointer by three more, and now those three things are saved zero, saved one, and saved two. Here I uh, check to see what kind of mode I'm in. If negative H mode means I've just finished a uh, restricted, uh, you know, an H box, a restricted horizontal mode. So that's what, it, that's, that's what applies. So I set curve box to uh, H pack of link of head, save two, save one. Okay, now H pack is my packaging subroutine. Um, talk about that in a sec. Link of head, well, here's head, the top of the list. Link of head is the beginning of the list. So when I call H pack, I want to know where the list starts. And I also have these two things on the save stack that said it was 200, that it says it was 200 points. So I want to make it 800 points exactly. Uh, and H pack is the subroutine that's uh, called the packager. And, the, and it's the main way to, to, to uh, take a list and make it into a box. It's sort of the way. Uh, H pack and V pack are the two things in there. Uh, the packaging subroutines, which come right after me, right here, packaging, page 196, 554 packaging, and uh, th that section is is in, um, devoted to creating um, eight, to the H pack subroutine. H pack subroutine essentially runs through this list, figures out how big it is, um, so it'll finds character, you know, font F, character C, um, and uh, from that it knows, it looks up in the font information uh, and uh, sees how wide the character is, how high it is, how deep it is, so we can compute the, the, the depth of this H box. It looks at the next thing, it's glue, and it um, uh, records how much stretchability there is, whether or not it's infinite and whatever. Um, and uh, gets to the end of the list, says, see, I'm supposed to make it up to 100 points. Makes up, a, uh, makes up a new box node that says the glue is stretching uh, by a certain factor. Uh, this is the height of the box, this is the depth of the box. HPAC does all those nice things. And returns a pointer to the box it made, the box node it made, and uh, as we saw, it's, that pointer gets stuffed into cur box. Okay, that's what we were in handle right brace somewhere. Other. Well, I got lost and we're getting short of time. But that's the one. So the right brace has taken us through that much. And uh, if I go, if I could find my code back again here on boxes, uh, building boxes, I bet you what would happen next is that I would pop the nest and go back to my environment. Uh, but wherever that is, page 335. Okay, here we go. Yeah. So curve box was set to. Um, H pack, um, uh, and uh, and then uh, we pop the nest, which means that we get by this time we've got another pointer to this to this list already. This list is now pointed to by by some box node or other, <clears throat> and um, head is still pointing to it. But I but I wipe this node out, I recycle it, put it back into uh, in, into free memory, and then I call the box end procedure. The box end procedure is going to take cur box and add it to the current list in the in the outer mode, and uh, we'll either it'll either lower it or raise it or or put it in liters or whatever the the context on save save zero tells it to do. So there we are. We finished an H box. Now that's taken us through uh, a lot of the uh, uh, of the ideas of tech, and I think by by that example you'll get a feeling for uh, you know what other things are going to. Are, um, uh, are going to happen. Anything could have happened inside this H box. Of course, it could have called a V box. That could have had a displayed format inside of the V box and all that other stuff going on. But it's all done with uh, the uh, <coughs> the same same basic idea that we save some things on a on the uh, nesting stack, some things on a save stack, and we have a few vital procedures like the H pack procedure that uh, make transformations on the data structure. Finally, everything gets into the data structure, and uh, we're ready to do things like break it into lines for paragraphs. And that's the, t 
that's the uh, subject of the lecture at two o'clock, breaking paragraphs into lines. Uh, the most interesting one that I want to especially recommend is the one at 3.30 on hyphenation. We should have some fun with that if the computer is still up because uh, the brand new hyphenation algorithm in tech and I want to show you um, how it works and do some experiments with it. Uh, the, so, so this afternoon, well, both of them are pretty good, but the hyphenation one will be the most fun for me. 